Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our third English Grammar Day. Issues of language are as important today uh, as they possibly ever could be. So I look forward to hearing uh, your contributions to the day. Far from ushering in a new era of linguistic whateverism, Web 2.0 has spawned a flourishing popular culture of prescriptivism and pedantry. And its most active supporters are the so-called digital natives. Grammar is cool, and it's cool to know your grammar. We're playing a cricket match. Basically, somebody had hit something that looked like it might have been a six that gave us the win, or it might have been a four because it bounced just short of the boundary and therefore we'd lost. And the fielder on the boundary on the opposition team was a black country boy who screamed at his teacher, No, sir, eat day, go over. They're both primary school teachers and literacy coordinators. And so we thought it would be really interesting to come along and see how we could further develop our teaching. There was a really interesting talk first thing this morning about how teenagers and children use grammar. Um, and we've been thinking about how we could use things like text messages and Twitter and things like that to engage the children a bit more in their writing. I think what she's saying is fantastic, very good, that she's right, that we need to um, not pathologise uh, language and be curious about use of language but we also need to be curious about the way that young people are using language and are generating themselves and ask them about it talk to them about it rather than making assumptions about what they do and don't understand or do or don't want to be saying to them. I'm from the north of England my husband isn't he's a Londoner and we, we came to the grammar day last year and thoroughly enjoyed it um, we've been married um, 30 years almost and it was only last year that I realized that when he has something to say. He would say, for instance, um, I won't be going shopping. But I would say, I'll not be going shopping. And I've now found out why. I've always been mad about grammar since I was about three years of age. Uh, when I heard one of my neighbours saying to another neighbour, Martin, ask your mum what buzz you going on. And I rushed into my house and told my mum, and she explained to me that some people speak differently. And it's, it's good, it's great. As a linguist, I'm very happy that grammar is back on the curriculum. Teaching grammar should promote and encourage observations to pay attention to the language that surrounds you. Language is something that's bound up with human experience and the integration of its study into more real life contexts has got to be a priority. So hands up if you think rack has a W. For the Anglo-Saxons, spelling was much more phonetic than it is today. And so the problem of how to spell rack wouldn't really have troubled them because they would have pronounced it wurrack. So for instance, if we look on the BBC website, we find that the spelling without the W, the incorrect spelling, is more common than the spelling with it. So it seems to me sometimes what's happening is the language is changing. Now we accept that Words can change their meanings and their pronunciations, but for some reason we really don't like the idea of words changing their spellings. I know that because when I've suggested this before, it's got me into all kinds of trouble. Uh, not least when I was um, accused of single-handedly trying to undermine literacy standards in Oxfordshire schools. Oxford Don in spelling row. <laughs> I actually believe it or not, one of these weird people who read grammar books, even grammar dictionaries. Yes, it does interest me all the time, and all the time when I'm walking about, I'm like kind of collecting interesting things. The grammar's everywhere, it's, it's you know, what I'm doing now. And it's in the adverts and the notices all around us, it's all there. So I hope to talk about that in a minute. I've been out and about in the tube. Uh, the underground and various places looking at two things, imperatives and commands. Here are some of the texts that I've found. Please help us reduce gap-related injuries. <laughs> a command using an imperative, but not actually a command at all. Please stand on the right, hold the handrail, keep clear of the edges, hold children and family, carry dogs, fold pushchairs. All commands using imperatives, but interestingly not of equal status or kind, given the context. Yes, we can all stand on the right, we can all hold the handrail, we can all keep clear of the edges, but to obey the next command, hold children and family, <laughs> we will have to get hold of some children and family, and then we'll have to get some dogs to hold and some pushchairs to fold. If not, we could be in trouble.
But let's ask the question, why study grammar? Well, because it's uniquely human. So knowing about grammar helps us understand who we are. It's like a mirror to the mind. It's part of our psychology, part of our being. We should take grammar back, enjoy it, and see what value it has in our curriculum. Our answer is Englishes. It's a free online platform for teaching English grammar and English language across key stages one to five, <coughs> aligned with the UK national curriculum. It uses real examples, so not made up examples, the cats up on the map, spoken and written materials. A lot of the grammar here, as some of us have been arguing today, is contextualised. It's not just bare grammar. It's not just the naming of the parts, even though there's a place for that too, I think. It's contextualised grammar as well. It helps teachers to make clear why the study of grammar is useful and how it can be taught in an enjoyable way. So Ellen's going to show you a bit about this English site now. So this activity is designed to get students to kind of do grammar themselves and explore it and investigate it. If we had something like um, a cheerful comedian that I caught, okay? So the idea is to get students to come up, move these columns to create their own noun phrases and sometimes end up with some quite funny ones. So this is just a very small snapshot of some of the activities um, and resources we've got available on the website. And the other thing I didn't mention, this website's completely free. Well, I thought um, that was very positive and very interesting. Um, and I could see ways that that could be adapted. So I think it's very good. It's good to know what's going on uh, on the ground. And, uh, you know, this is a lovely forum for... Uh, you know, bringing together linguists as well as uh, language teachers and it's fascinating to see so many uh, people from very many different generations all sharing an interest in grammar. It's a really good range of speakers, they've got a lot of interesting things to say and I think it's really nice to have a day where grammar is talked about as something that's useful and fun and interesting all at the same time. It's been really good hearing about some positive things from the Englishus resources right through to Ian Cushing's work, uh, you know, integrating language and literary study in schools. So I think that's been a real bonus. So on my 11 plus paper, I had to say the antonym of the word ebb and the antonym of the word wax, which I think I put petrol. <laughs> Integrating grammar into classrooms, I thought that was really, really interesting because um, I'm training to be a teacher at the moment and uh, we have a lot of ESOL students and students who came from other backgrounds and they're just thrown into the classroom. When they're writing essays, they find it very hard and sometimes they lag behind, so it's about giving them that support so that they don't fall behind. Mm -hmm. I totally enjoyed it. 